Following on from my previous video where we fitted a new fuel system in beef and I've gone through all the different fittings that I used uh, and pipe to do that. Today I'm going to show you how to fit the AN fitting, so this is an AN6 8mm fitting, onto stainless steel braided Teflon hosing. Now there's quite a few videos out there you can search to, to learn how to do this, this is what I did, um, and it's a pretty straightforward process. However, none of the videos I saw actually show you what sometimes goes wrong. Um, and I did have to have a few attempts at cutting and stuff um, for, the, for various reasons. So today I'm going to show you what can go wrong basically, so hopefully you'll get it right first time. Let's do it. I briefly touched on this in my previous video, but I want to mention it again because it's quite important. Uh, but your first challenge is to make sure you get the correct fittings. Uh, first of all, uh, the size naming is a little bit odd, so AN6 is 8mm. Uh, I'll ping up a chart that shows you the different sizes uh, relative to the actual name. So AN6 is 8mm, not 6mm, and AN8 is not 8mm. <laughs> so just check out the chart. Uh, also, there's two different types of fittings, and they look almost identical. Uh, so this is like the fast flow ones and stuff, um, and they're basically for clamping onto oil pipe, uh, not Teflon. Uh, these ones are specifically for Teflon hosing. Uh, if you buy the wrong ones, you're going to be in big trouble. Uh, so you need to make sure you get the right ones. And when you look at the, the eBay list, if you do search for any fittings, for example, um, they all get jumbled up together. Um, and it's really hard to tell because visually they look almost identical. Um, so you need to make sure in the description it says suitable for Teflon hosing. Um, I have put some links below which should all be for Teflon, but again, just double check because even I make mistakes. Um, but yeah, so make sure you get the right fittings. It's a good start. My first attempt at cutting the hose, I use these. Now, they don't look like much, but these are actually cammed cutters, so they bite a lot harder than you squeeze. Uh, and these bad boys will actually cut through nails and all sorts. They're absolutely amazing. Um, they did cut through the pipe. They did it relatively cleanly, actually. Um, however, they don't work. It's not a solution that you can use because basically they crushed the pipe. Um, they didn't cut sharp enough. Um, so the pipe was crushed and unusable. So these are not a solution you can use. A bit like that. So if you look at how professionals do it, they have a big abrasive wheel on the chop saw and they just straight through it, it goes through like butter. Um, so next I got out the angle grinder and a slitting disc. So a one mil slitting disc um, and it was quite well worn like this. It didn't work very well. <laughs> so basically, don't be tight, put a brand new disc on your wheel. I'm not sure if it's a speed thing or what, or if it's the fact that you have to get contamination in the, in the surface, but that snagged a lot, lot more than a brand new disc did. So put a new disc on before you start trying to cut it. Now you've got your new slitting disc on, you've got to cut through your braided hose. Uh, now you have to put some tape around it to basically hold it together. If you don't, it just goes bang, and basically all the flare, it all flares open, and then you can't get your fitting on. Uh, if you've got one end that's open, you can do it from the side, but most of the time you don't. Um, so you have to put some tape around basically. So when you're cutting it through the tape, um, it keeps all that braid together in a nice tight knot. One of the videos I saw was using electrical tape around the, uh, the sheath uh, to hold it together. And I found that doesn't work. Uh, basically, when you're cutting through it, it gets quite hot. And this gets all squishy and flexible and hot and gooey. And basically, you still end up with a, a load of pipe flaring, so it can make it unusable. So in my experience, when I tried it a couple of times, electrical tape does not work very well. Neither does cheaper duct tape. Um, so this particular one's called. So basically, the cheaper duct tapes have kind of plastic webbing in them rather than like a cloth webbing. And if it's a plastic webbing, it's going to get hot when you're cutting through. Again, it's going to expand and stretch, um, and it doesn't do a very good job of holding the, the sheath together. So avoid the cheaper duct tapes. In the end, I got some decent 3M black duct tape uh, that's got a cloth webbing to it rather than plastic, and that seemed to do the best job. Uh, so that's what I use now for doing this job. When you're cutting the pipe, it often snags like cutting any tube and stuff does, I guess. Um, so you have to hold it firm. If you're working on the bench, it's dead easy just to cut in the vise. That's the best option. Um, but if you're working on the car and you kind of got a long length like I had, so you couldn't have you didn't have brakes in there, uh, you have to cut it in place. And the best option I found for that was basically just to hold it firm with a pair of pipe wrenches or something. Um, even if you can get someone to help you hold it while you cut it as well, it's even better. So it's easy with two. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have to hold it firm somehow to cut this, um, otherwise you're going you're to get a, a rough job again. Okay, you're going to get a duct tape. You're going to go around it a couple of times. If you do any more than that, you'll struggle to get the fitting over.
I recommend wearing gloves. They won't save you. You will be bleeding by the end of this because this stuff's lethal. It's absolutely sharp as hell. I've already got a jab on the back of my hand, look. Um, so yeah, you will probably be bleeding by the end of the uh, this process, but they do help a little bit, I guess. So you want to go through a nice steady speed, not too fast, not too slow. Um, if you go through really fast, the um, braided sheath will actually glow hot. Um, and I found occasionally it can actually damage the inner sheath. It can actually melt it and it goes thinner on one side. Um, also, if you go through too slowly, um, sometimes you get a lot of flash on the uh, the inner sheath as well on the on the nylon part. Uh, so just a nice steady pace I found seems to work the best. Which gives us a result like that. Now it's not fully uh, cut through at the end, it's still connected, so use our snips or a decent pair of scissors. Just take that off. Now you can see it's starting to flare out there. Um, intensifying with the, like I mentioned, with the, the cheaper tapes, that's that's enhanced more, it flares out more and because of the heat and it just gets softer and it opens up more. Um, that's what you're, trying to, what you're trying to avoid. You need to trim off any excess on here because um, we've got to get the, the fitting over the end of this. You can just see there there's a little bit of flash on the inside of the Teflon so if you get a little knife or a big knife you can just gently it comes off very very easy just use it to scrape it off. It's not incredibly essential because the, the part that clamps down isn't actually this very first part anyway um, but it does help get the, the fitted on a bit easier if it's not on there. Make sure you get any bits out. <laughs> right, let's go get our fitting. So this is where you hope you've done a good job with cutting because uh, we have to take this part off the fitting. And the flare end goes over the end of here. This is where you'll end up bleeding. Quite a tight fit sometimes. There you go. So any more than a couple of wraps of the uh, the tape, then you'll struggle to get that over anyway. Once you've got the fit in over the end, you can remove the tape. Again, if you've got decent quality stuff, it shouldn't leave anything behind, hopefully. Now in this case it's flared out a little bit on the end so it might not be too bad to actually go with it as it is. Um, what you sometimes need to do is, well a lot of people recommend using a screwdriver, kind of jam it down between there and flare it out a little bit. Um, it, it works, um, but it can make the, the ends go frayed and all messy. Um, I paid for one of these which is uh, a flaring tool. It was £26 so not cheap at all, um, I have put a link below. Um, for one if you want to get one, but say um, I, I'm a bit of a tool whore, I like to have all the right tools <laughs> and do things as best I can. So basically that should go on there, kind of all the way in and it flares out the, the sheath look. So next we get our little, uh, I don't know what they call it, olive I guess, um, the pointy end goes into the A bit tricky. It's putting up a little bit of a fight because there's a bit of flash on the outside, look there. So again, just get your knife and trim anything off that's causing you trouble. You don't have to worry about too much about causing damage here because say it doesn't clamp on this very first section anyway. Um, but you want to minimise it. There we go. So you kind of push it on as hard as with your thumb if you can. Um, you can get a, a hammer or something, just tap it on or push it on your bench. Just push down. And you want to make sure that the sheath goes all the way up to the top of the olive. So if the liner bends in like that, folds in on itself, it can actually just be straightened out. The screwdriver. Like so. So nothing to panic about. So 
once that's on all the way, I'm going to get the pointy end, and that should fit in here. Again, it's a little bit tight, should be. Make sure it's all the way on. And now we slide our cap over and nip it down. So this will both clump on the inside edge and also it keeps the, the flared braid tight as well. Now we've got to nip it all up. Um, this middle section we have to hold tight on the fitting is 11 16 Now I didn't have a spanner so I have to borrow this um, to hold it steady so it fits on there nicely. Uh, I'm not sure what the big one is to be honest with you um, but I'm just going to use an adjustable. So without pulling the, the pipe out of the fitting at all it fits in there quite tight anyway, so it's pretty hard to pull off, to be honest. And nip it up. Now, you don't have to go too crazy. Remember, it's an aluminium fitting. You don't want to be splitting the fitting. So I'll give that a good, decent nip. You know when it's tight. And we're good to go. That's how to fit your AN6 or AN whatever it may be onto your Teflon braided hose. Hope that helps, guys. Take care.